This is Anita Knudsen reporting live from Covent, yeah. North Dakota. There is a ginormous tornado coming towards us in the southeast. <laughs> Whether she was hamming it up for the camera <laughs> or out dancing with her girls, Anita Knudsen was the kind of person almost everyone liked having around. Anita was the coolest girl, like everybody at school loved her. I was really lucky to have her as my sister. At only 18 years old, she was living on her own, working two jobs and putting herself through college at Minot State University. Her life, it seemed, was just beginning, and yet... I touched her head. Someone hated her, enough to want her dead. And she was cold. When she was just a baby, Anita was taken in by Gordon and Sharon Knutson, and her adoptive siblings, Daniel and Anna, soon followed. What did you really admire about her? She didn't really care a lot about what other people thought of her. She was the nicest person I've ever known. Not that she was always sugar and spice. If somebody was being picked on, she would stand behind them. When she was in high school, there was a, a girl the principal sent her home because she didn't follow the dress code. But after studying the school's rule book, Anita wasn't so sure. She went to the principal and says, I think you need to apologize to this girl. She says, I make the rules around here. And she says, I know you do. You got them written down. <laughs> Every day when she'd come to school, she'd stick her head in the door and said, have you apologized yet? And finally he did. That was the kind of person she was. But sometimes being that kind of person, a champion for the underdog, could be problematic. To some people, like her senior prom date, Tyler, that kind of attention could be hard to let go. What about Tyler? What do you think of him? He's different. He's still different. <laughs> she did mention one time after the prom that he was kind of persistent. She didn't say this, but he'd probably been trying to get her to go out, and she wasn't going out with anybody. So it appeared he was more interested in her than, than she was in him. After high school, Tyler even moved into the same apartment complex to be closer to Anita. But then most people wanted to be close to Anita until someone got too close. June 4th, a Monday. No one has heard from the normally sociable college student in days. I talked to her Friday. She said she was going home. And that was the last time I talked to her. The next day, Anita stays home from her job at a local hotel. And then, no one's quite sure. I called her Saturday, just out of habit of calling her every day almost. And she didn't answer, so I called Sunday. No answer Sunday. And so Monday, I called her and still no answer. She should have been answering her phone. After that, Sharon asked her husband to drive out to Anita's apartment to check on her. When did you know something was wrong? I went and knocked on the door and it didn't answer and her car was there. Gordon tries to let himself in, but the door is locked. So I went to the apartment manager and said that I wanted her to open the door. First she said she couldn't do that because she could get in trouble. And I said, well, I think maybe you'll get in trouble if you don't. That's when the manager's boyfriend, the maintenance man, shows Gordon a slice window screen he found in the yard, the screen to Anita's bedroom window. They go over to where the window was and I seen somebody laying in there. And I walked over and the window is open and I touched her head. And I said, you get that door open right now. Inside the apartment, no signs anything sinister went down until they get to Anita's bedroom. The mattress was soaked with mud. She was covered up with a large house coat. She was laying face down on the bed. I touched her and her body was cold, so I know she was dead. From that point, I think I was just in total shock. It's in that state of shock that Gordon has to give the rest of his family the news. He just called me and he said, Anita's dead. That was real, real hard because for the adoption, I had to go to court and tell the judge I would take care of her 
and make sure she was safe her whole life. And I didn't manage to do that. Didn't protect her that one day. Across town, Sharon and Gordon's son, Daniel, has also just received the news. We're driving home and my brother was crying. I was like, Daniel, what's wrong? Like, you know, I mean, I've never really seen my brother cry or even be like the slightest bit sad. And he's like, Anita's dead. At that moment, I didn't understand. I mean, I obviously understand what those words mean, but I mean, to hear it, I was just kind of like, she's dead? Like, <laughs> she's so young. Like, she's the nicest person. Like, what happened? And he told me that somebody killed her. And Police arrive a short time later and begin scouring the crime scene. According to the forensics, uh, cr the crime lab said that she was killed on Sunday morning. It was with a pocket knife, three, four inch blade, I would suspect, multiple stab wounds to the chest. In what seems like a stroke of luck, investigators actually find the murder weapon, a cheap novelty pocket knife at the foot of Anita's bed. But the motive for her murder is much more elusive. Were there any signs of sexual assault? The police say no. Sign of robbery? Were any of her belongings missing? Well, that's a real interesting part of it, I thought, is that nothing was discovered missing. It was not considered a robbery at all, just plain murder. But was it a random crime, or was this a targeted killing? To get answers, police start looking at the people closest to Anita, and few seem to stick closer than that old prom date, Tyler. In fact, to find him, detectives don't have to look any farther than just outside the taped-off crime scene. He was there not too long after the day that I found her. Was his behavior odd? Yeah, I would say it was odd. There was no tears. Right after the murder? Right. I thought that Tyler was acting suspicious, and I thought it could be him. But was he just a good friend with a lingering interest? or something more? That's just one of the many questions I decided to ask him myself. Nice to meet you, Tyler. Nice to meet you. This is a little awkward for me to ask because your wife is literally yeah. right here. Were you in love with Anita? Coming up. You had a crush on her? Yes. Was it reciprocal? Uh. What information does Tyler have about the life and death of Anita Knutson?